Pangolin blueprints are declarative configurations that you can use to automate and version control your setup steps. They're very similar to that of Terraform or CloudFormation, where you can define the resources in YAML, or you can even do it through Docker labels like traffic. You can kind of see some examples here in our docs. Uh, you can apply a blueprint file through the Newt CLI tool. Um, you can also, here's an example using the YAML, how that could look. You can also apply them through Docker labels. So if you scroll down here, um, once you give Newt access to that Docker socket, you can then create your resources via labels. And this is great specifically because if you define everything in Compose, when you launch that Docker Compose, it'll go and create the resources in Pangolin and even update them if they already exist. This way you don't have to go click around the dashboard and you can just commit this file directly to Git if you uh, are into GitOps. There's tons of different configuration options here in the docs. You can just scroll through and see all the different things you configure. Um, this is ever evolving as we continue to add things to Pangolin. We'll make sure to update this so that way you can declare your configs um, for all the different features we provide. I'm gonna quickly demonstrate setting this up with a resource that I have on an EC2. So I'm gonna start with Docker Compose using Docker labels, and then I'll use Newt the CLI tool and pass in a YAML file to do the same thing I did with the Docker Compose. So to start, I have an EC2, and I'm just going to um, expose Grafana. So you can see here I have Newt, I have the Grafana container, and I have the Prometheus container all running on the same stack. The first step is going to be to add in um, support for Newt, so that way it can actually read the Docker socket and read those labels. So if you scroll down in the docs, you'll actually find some code snippets that we can reuse here. The first step is to actually give Newt access to the Docker socket, so that way it can read the labels from the different containers in the stack. Um, this is just done in two easy steps. We just need to copy this volume section into the uh, newt container, and then we also need to pass it in an environment variable to the location of the Docker socket. For most Linux systems, the default here will work fine, um, but if you're on Mac OS or Windows, this may uh, be slightly different for you. So the next step is we apply the labels to the specific container. So for here, I'm going to expose the Grafana container. So I'll just add those labels. All right, so here's a very simple example. I'm just exposing a resource with the ID Grafana, with the name Grafana. Uh, it's at this domain here, and this is a domain that I already have attached to my Pangolin organization and verified. Um, I have the resource as an HTTP resource and SSO is enabled. So just note here that actually by default, SSO is disabled when using Blueprints. So make sure if you want login um, set up that you set that to true. And then I'm just creating one target at HTTP Grafana 3000, and that's referring to this container itself. There's a couple of niceties here, actually. So we can leave out this target, and by default, it'll attempt to infer the target based on the container's ports. For this, it would work because it would see port 3000, and it would automatically create a target at the container's host name, port 3000, and it would work as well. But I'm just declaring, declaring it very straightforward here, so that way it's easy to understand. So the next step is we can actually run um, this stack. So if we do Docker Compose up and let everything start up, you'll see here somewhere in the logs, um, there's a lot of logs, but when Newt starts up, it will say Blueprint applied successfully. And then if we go back to the Pangolin dashboard now and reload the page, you'll actually see that resource was created. And if we click on the resource and click edit, you'll see that, um, there we go, a target was created at Grafana port 3000. And now if we go visit this domain, we're actually passed right through into Grafana, which is great, so it's working. Now do note that if you go ahead and delete the labels and then start everything up again, it won't actually destroy the resources. You have to manually go to the dashboard um, and delete the resource if you no longer want it to exist. We may add this in the future, but for now, this is just a protection we decided to add. Uh, next, I'm gonna show how to apply the blueprint through a YAML file using a structure that looks more like this and passing that actually into the Newt CLI tool rather than using the Newt Docker container. So first I'm just gonna remove this container from the Docker Compose. And then I'm gonna to go to uh, the sites, add site, and copy the install command for the Newt CLI tool itself. I'll just make sure I have that installed. Then I'm just gonna create any YAML file and you can name this file, whatever you want, as long as, in, as it's in YAML format. So I'm just gonna just for now call it blueprint.yaml. And then in here, I can copy in a very similar config that you saw before to do the same thing, but this time just in YAML structure. So this is exactly the same as before. It's creating one resource with the ID called Grafana. Uh, the name is Grafana. It's served at this domain. SSO is enabled, and the target is set to localhost 3000. This time it's set to localhost because it's not running in the same Docker container, or excuse me, Docker stack as a container. 
This is running outside as a binary. So it's just referencing the host uh, by local host and then using the bound port 3000, which is when the Grafana container starts up, it's bound to that port, so this should work. But now I can run the CLI command and pass in the file. So I already have this copied to my clipboard. What you can see here is this is starting up Newt um, with the ID and secret endpoint, and then this time passing in the blueprint file location, which is just at my home directory, and then I named it blueprint.yaml. So I'll go ahead and start this up, and you'll see it goes through a very similar process. Um, it starts, connects, and then actually applies that blueprint. And if it's successful, you'll see a success message. And if it fails, it'll actually print out an error to help us debug. All right, now back in the Penguin console, if we go back to resources, uh, just reload to be sure. Yeah, you'll see we have a resource that we created. And if you remember from before, we actually deleted it. So this is a fresh resource uh, with the same config applied with localhost 3000, um, SSO is enabled under authentication. And then of course it's served to that same domain. And now if we go visit this domain, because I still have the Docker stack running in the background with Newt, um, granted access through SSO, um, just like before. So that's Penguin Blueprints in a nutshell. You can do it with YAML files or Docker labels to start. We hope this makes it easier for you to version control and automate your setups from start to finish, uh, as well as manage Penguin at scale. I hope you give it a try.